Imagine being trapped in space and finding out that your country no longer exists. That's what happened to Sergei Krikalev, the last Soviet cosmonaut of the USSR. On December 26, 1991, his nation collapsed, and he was left stranded over 200 miles above Earth on the Mir space station, without a valid passport and with no day of return in sight. A cosmonaut. Sergei Krikalev was born in Leningrad, the capital of the Soviet Union. He graduated from the Leningrad Mechanical Institute with a degree in mechanical engineering. He began working for Energia soon after, a Soviet corporation highly involved in the development of spacecraft and stations. When the Salyut 7 space station lost communication with the USSR, Sergei Krikalev was on ground control for the successful rescue mission. In 1985, the Soviet Union selected him for cosmonaut training, which he completed by 1986. He first worked on the one and only launch of the Buran Shuttle Orbiter. It was an automated mission that took the spacecraft twice around planet Earth. After that, he was selected for a long-duration mission aboard the Mir station, in low orbit, planned by France and the USSR. After training, he went on his first space flight aboard the Soyuz TM-7 along with his commander Alexander Volkov and the French astronaut Jean-Luc Chrétien. Starting on November 26, 1988, and returning to the ground in late April of 1989, Krikalev spent five months, 151 days at Mir. During his time in the space station, the cosmonaut participated in six extravehicular activities, or EVAs, the installation of a module, and the testing of an astronaut propulsion unit. For the first 25 days of the mission, the crew of the Soyuz TM-7 overlapped with the previous Mir crew, totaling the longest time period that a six-person crew had been in Earth's orbit. Krikalev began communicating with radio operators on the ground, mostly amateurs, an activity he would repeat throughout his illustrious career. He formed a close relationship with operator Margaret Lequinto. They spoke over packet radio marking the first time in history that an orbiting station and an amateur operator had a line of communication. Furthermore, he spoke to ground engineer Yelena Terakina, falling in love from space. Ascent to Mir As soon as Krikalev landed, preparations for his next flight commenced. This time, the mission was scheduled to last eight months on the Mir station, with ten intended EVAs. He trained throughout the next few months, and took off in May of 1991. Before that, however, he had time to marry Elena Tarakina and conceive a daughter. The Soyuz TM-12 flight was commanded by Anatoly Archibarkse, and included Helen Sherman, the first Briton in space. Her seat was paid for through a private consortium and Soviet funding. As they approached Mir, something went wrong, and the targeting system of Soyuz TM-12 stopped working. Sherman was worried, but she would later describe that Krikaliev was calm and collected under the pressing circumstances. The Russian cosmonaut aimed the craft manually, and they were able to board Mir. The three of them joined the previous crew of two. Only eight days after arrival, Sherman headed back down to Earth with the two cosmonauts that had been staying in Mir. They landed in Kazakhstan on May 26, 1991, in the return capsule of the Soviet TM-11. Over that summer, Archibaksi and Krikaliev undertook six extravehicular exercises and worked on multiple experiments. Krikaliev was blissfully unaware that his eight-month mission would extend with no end in sight, as his country fell apart hundreds of miles below him. The Soviet Union would dissolve into 15 nations, his hometown of Leningrad would turn into St. Petersburg, and he would be left in space with an outdated passport as the last citizen of the Soviet Union. The Fall Life at the Mir space station was busy. Between scientific work, necessary exercise and maintenance, 
the cosmonauts had little to no recreational time. They partook in six EVAs throughout five months to upgrade and repair parts of the station. Two flights came in with additional supplies. The Progress M8 arrived on May 30th, 1991, and the Progress M9 on August 20th. For their extravehicular activities, they had to work over 32 hours on repairs to the Coors antenna, used for automated docking. As July rolled in, Krikalyev agreed to continue serving as flight engineer. Since the two incoming flights for October had been turned to one, and the engineer being sent on that mission was not prepared for a long-duration mission. The crew of Soyuz TM-14 landed on October 2nd, and left a few days later on October 10th taking Krikalyev's companion, Archibarkse, with them. Alexander Volkov, the commander, stayed behind with Krikalyev. As Volkov and Krikalyev continued with their daily tasks at the space station, the nation that had sent them up there was racing to an unprecedented end. Krikalyev received whatever news he could about the state of the USSR through Margaret Lequinto and his wife, Yelena. Lequinto would send them an electronic bulletin with Western news and media information regarding the approaching death of the Soviet Union. Yelena would communicate regularly over radio, now taking care of their nine-month-old daughter all by herself. The situation first got worrisome for the cosmonauts in August of 1991, when a failed coup on Gorbachev destabilized the Union. Krikalyev would later recall, quote, We didn't understand what happened. When we discussed all this, we tried to grasp how it would affect the space program. Krikalyev worried about his family, with the future of the space program hanging in a limbo of uncertainty and the Soviet ruble tumbling in decreasing value. As the USSR stumbled politically and financially, it sold seats on its space flights to foreign governments. Furthermore, talks that the USSR might sell the Mir space station were circulating. What that would have meant for the cosmonauts is unclear. They did have one exit option, taking a Soyuz capsule intended for emergencies, but that would have meant leaving Mir to its own fate. Most likely an end to the space station. The Mir space station was known to be a confined place, where smells concentrated and noises from machinery never ceased. Several uninvited microorganisms made their home at the station, and the smell inside has been compared to sweat and cognac. Yet Krikalyev made the space his own. According to astronaut Sherman, quote, He always said when we got into the space station, he felt like he was going home. The single window at Mir helped the cosmonauts, and Krikalyev particularly, to put up with the months of isolation and low gravity. Quote, Every spare moment, we tried to look at the Earth. The Union of Soviet Socialist Republics officially fell on December 26, 1991, and the cosmonauts on Mir were one of the last things on the list of priorities for the nations that formed. Volkov had been on board since October 2, 1991, and Krikalyev since May 18, 1991. Despite the turmoil below, they had to continue with their daily routines and maintain the station in working condition. About this moment, Krikalyev would later state that he questioned himself, quote, Do I have enough strength? Will I be able to readjust for this longer stay to complete the program? Naturally, at one point, I had my doubts. In January of 1992, they finally received supplies and mail from the transporter Progress M10. After retrieving the contents of the capsule, they relearned it with data, samples, and results from experiments. The return of Progress M10 was delayed due to issues with the gyroscopes at the stations, but after implementing a spontaneous solution, Progress was sent down to the Kazakhstan steppe on January 20th. Seven days later, they received another supply craft, the M11. While the cosmonauts got impatient for their own return to Earth, the workers at ground control went on a strike to demand better wages. The strike nearly compromised the arrival of M11, but fortunately Krikalyev and Volkov were able to coordinate the arrival despite little support on the ground. In February, Krikalyev set a new record for the amount of hours spent on an EVA. The cosmonauts' EVA, which focused on inspecting external test objects and modules, got off to a rocky start when Volkov's spacesuit malfunctioned and he was forced to stay in the hatch. 
Krikalyev conducted the necessary repairs for the cover of the Sofura truss structure and other tasks. He spent four hours, twelve minutes outside of the station. And by the time he returned, he had completed thirty-six and a half hours of extravehicular activity. Krikalyev's extended stay, however, was about to end. In March of 1992, the first German to travel to Mir was launched on the Soyuz TM-14. German astronaut K.D. Flade stayed with the two cosmonauts for a couple of days, and finally on March 25th, the three of them boarded Soyuz TM-14. Awaited return. Sergei Krikaliev landed in the New Republic of Kazakhstan, where he got his first breath of fresh atmospheric air in 312 days. In regards to his arrival, Krikaliev has said, quote, Psychologically, the load was lifted. There was a moment. You couldn't call it euphoria, but it was very good. He was reunited with his young daughter and his wife as he stepped into the Russian Federation for the first time and had to get a new passport to match his new nationality. The space program he had been working for was now split between Russia's Russian Aviation and Space Agency and Ukraine's National Space Agency of Ukraine. A life in space. Krikalyev was not dissuaded from his passion by the unexpected turn of events that left him in Mir for so long. NASA and Russia sent him on their first joint space flight, STS-60, a Discovery Shuttle mission. A New York Times article from the time describes him with admiration, quote, At the age of 35, Sergei K. Krikalyev has been an engineer, a daredevil airplane pilot, and an officially designated hero. He has traveled around the world more than 7,000 times. He also went on Expedition 1, the first long-duration mission to the International Space Station. Throughout his life, he logged a total of 803 days, 9 hours, and 40 minutes in space. He received several honors and awards for his role in space exploration, among them the titles of Hero of the Soviet Union, and later on, Hero of the Russian Federation. Thank you for watching. Hit that subscribe button to become part of our community and never miss an episode. And get ready to dive into the fascinating world of dark documentaries, where we bring you the most thrilling and thought-provoking historical accounts. Stay tuned for more.